In this video, I'm going to do a couple problems from the book. These are not the same as the recommended book problems. They, I mean, they basically are, but they're just the evens like of those. So I'm going to start with just number two on page 92, section 2.4. It's asking us to find the average rate of change. And there's a part A and B. I'm just going to do part B. Um, so the average rate of change of f of x, and f of x is the square root of 4x plus 1. And so for part B, that's asking us to find the average rate of change between the interval when x is 10 to when x is 12. So in order to find the average rate of change, we use our formula for average rate of change. This is A, this is B, right? So the average rate of change is f of B minus f of A all over B minus A. So for us, that is f of 12 minus f of 10 all over 12 minus 10. So let's plug in 12 into our function. When we plug 12 into our function, we'll get 4 times 12, right, which is 48 plus 1. So that is the square root of 49. Then when we plug 10 into our function, we'll get 40 plus 1. So that would end up being 41 under there. Our denominator ends up being 2. All right, I'm going to move over here. The square root of 49 is easy. This I'll need a calculator for. So the square root of 41 is 6.4. And let's just round to the nearest tenth. That's fine. All over 2. So when we do that subtraction, we'll get 0.6 divided by 2, and that is, of course, 0.3. If you actually look in the solutions manual that I've provided, look the PDF online, they round further. They say it's 0.298. This is good. All right, number 10a is the next one I'll do, and this one has us finding the slope of the curve f of x equals x squared minus 4x at x equals 1. So we want the instantaneous rate of change. We want it at just this one point. So we're going to use our formula for that. So it's going to be the limit as h goes to 0 of f of a plus h minus f of a all over h. Now in this case, a is 1. So I'm just going to erase the a, and I'm going to input a 1 there instead. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is plug in 1 plus h into our function. And so that looks like squaring it first. So 1 plus h, then it gets squared, minus 4 times 1 plus h. So, so far I've only found this, f of 1 plus h. I plugged 1 plus h into our function. Then we're going to subtract f of 1. f of 1 is very easy to do. Um, I'm going to do that part in white. So we'll do minus f of 1 just in white here. So minus, I'm plugging in 1, so I'm going to do 1 squared minus 4 times 1. And then that's all over h. As we keep going... When we square 1 plus h, we need to do 1 plus h times 1 plus h. And so we'll end up getting 1 plus h plus h, which is plus 2h, plus h squared. And then we need to distribute the minus 4 through. So we'll have minus 4 minus 4h. Then we have to decide, so I did that. Then we have to decide what this value is. Not decide, I guess find. So it's 1 squared, so 1 minus 4 times 1. So 1 minus 4. This is a negative 3 in here. So we're doing minus negative 3. So that's a plus 3 at the end. All over h. Now at this point, if we plugged in h is 0, we'd have issues, right? Up here, we'd still have 0 over 0. So the 1 minus 4 is negative 3. That cancels with the plus 3. Great. Then we have a plus 2h and a minus 4h. And that can combine to a minus 2h. So I'm going to clean up a little bit. So we have an h squared and then a minus 2h all over h. Again, if we direct substitute it in 0 for h right now, we'd have 0 over 0, which is indeterminate form. So what we have to do is factor and cancel. 
So if the limit as h goes to 0, I'm going to factor the numerator. The GCF of h will come out front. We're left with h minus 2 all over h. Now the canceling happens. Now we can direct substitute in. We have the limit as h goes to 0 of h minus 2. We can direct substitute in 0 for h and get a final answer of negative 2.